so far, we've been discussing two civilizations, really. Sumer, the world's first civilization, and Egypt, the world's first nation. My last video provides a quick recap of those first 700 years of civilization, so if you haven't already, go check it out and spend five minutes getting up to speed. And if you want more depth about the first 700 years, you can always watch episodes two through nine of this project. And if you want to understand the aim of this project and how you can participate if you're a professor, a history buff, or a student, go watch my intro videos to both this project and this channel. Now in this video, we're going east to the Indus Valley in modern day Pakistan and India, where a third civilization emerged around the same time as Sumer and ancient Egypt. Now we don't know what they called themselves or their civilization, but some scholars speculate that they called themselves or their land Malua. But what we call their civilization is the Harappan civilization, named after the modern city of Harappa in Pakistan. In the 1920s, Harappa is one of the early excavation sites to reveal this ancient civilization that emerged over 5,000 years ago and spread all along the Indus Valley. So villages are believed to have appeared along these rivers in the late fourth millennium BCE. And according to Indian mythology, the exact date civilization began was 3102 BCE with Manu, who was the first person to step foot in India after the Great Flood. The myth explains that Manu was warned by a fish that he had recently saved that the Great Flood was coming. So he built an ark, brought along seven wise sages, known as Rishis, waited for the floodwaters to subside, then ruled India as the first king, while the seven Rishis became the seven stars of the Big Dipper. Of course, that's according to sources written down in Sanskrit in the second millennium BCE. And those sources were used to back figure when Indian civilization began, just like how James Usher used the Bible to back figure the day the earth was created. Outside of myth, however, most archeological evidence suggests that one particular culture, the Harappan culture, matured and flourished around 2600 to 1900 BCE. But two of my sources say this culture started to flourish around 2500 BCE. Which makes sense since Indian historian John Key says that when dating events this far back, scholars can plus or minus 100 years and still be within the realm of possibility. And for purposes of this project, Egypt owns the 26th century BCE by perfecting the pyramids during that time. So it made it easier to give this century, 2500 BCE, to the maturing Harappan culture. Either way, the Harappan culture is thought to have matured by this time and spread out along the Indus Valley. And the reason why scholars say the Harappan culture matured is because they discovered a uniform culture that spread all along the Indus that encompassed more than 70 towns. The two largest of these ancient towns are near the present day cities of Harappa and Mohenjo-Daro. And it's important to point out that archeological evidence is all we have of this culture. We do have some writing, but it hasn't been deciphered yet. So this culture's thoughts, leaders, and religions are unknown. So all we have to reconstruct this ancient civilization is the archaeological evidence. And from it, what we really see are uniform mud brick cities with surrounding walls, with watchtowers, all across the Indus Valley. And when I say uniform, I mean uniform. Historian John Key describes it as obsessive uniformity. This is evident in the standardized weights that were found at these sites, to the wide straight streets that align north to south, east to west, to the dimensions of the mud bricks that, no matter the size, follow the same ratio throughout the entire region. And these uniform bricks were used to construct uniform buildings that were one or two stories high and used for homes, for storage, and possible barracks for the servant class. They also used them to build these elaborate gutter and drainage systems for waterways, for bathrooms, and even large public baths. One interesting omission though, is that no buildings have been identified as a temple for worship. This seems like a notable and odd anomaly when comparing it to its Sumerian and Egyptian contemporaries, because even if we took away the Sumerian and Egyptian writing, we still have their tombs and temples. So we know that people of the Indus Valley were organized enough to build these grand cities that supported thousands of people, but we don't know how they did it, how they organized and how they worshiped. We also know from the archeological evidence that they traded with people in Mesopotamia because materials like tin, silver, lapis lazuli, and soapstone are not found in the Indus Valley. So they must have been imported from elsewhere. And along those lines, it's clear that the Mesopotamian cultures obtained numerous items from the Indus Valley, such as copper, gold, timber, ivory, and possibly cotton. On top of that, Harappan trade seals have been found in Sumerian sites. And Sumerian and Akkadian documentation mentions trade with the Malua, which as I mentioned earlier, are believed by some scholars to be the people of the Harappan culture. So that's pretty much it. Without going into more details about what I've already highlighted, that's really all scholars know about the thriving, mature Harappan culture. 
As for its demise, scholars believe that this culture lasted until around 1900 BCE when it started to collapse and its people moved away. Also around this time, scholars are confident that there was another migration of people into this area from the Northwest, and they slowly spread out through most of what is India today. This is often called the Aryan Migration, and these people either spoke Sanskrit or one of Sanskrit's ancestors. Now, a quick side note, Sanskrit is the oldest known readable written language in India, and the oldest surviving documents that scholars can actually read, known as the Vedas, date back to roughly 1500 BCE. This Vedic Sanskrit is the ancestor of many of India's languages today, including Hindi, and it's a sacred language of Hinduism, and it's without a doubt part of the Indo-European language family. This means that Hindi, English, and most of the countries that make up Western civilization are all part of the same language family. So if you ever wonder why India is sometimes lumped into the history of Western civilization, well, that's one of the reasons. It's part of our language family. Now, I mentioned this because it was initially believed that these Aryan invaders from the Northwest conquered the Harappan civilization, instantly forcing their culture and language onto the people of this conquered land. The problem, however, is that archaeologists have found no evidence of a massive military invasion during this time. Also, there's a huge time gap of roughly 400 years from when the Harappan culture collapsed and when the first Sanskrit Vedas were written down. And scholars have had a hard time nailing down what happened during this 400-year gap. Contemporary theories suggest that the Harappan civilization most likely ended slowly due to environmental changes like deforestation and rivers drying up which strained the resources to sustain a large population. And if it was something else other than this climate change, today most scholars seem to agree that the collapse of the Harappan civilization was slow over many years and not a sudden violent end. And of course, they still believe that there was an Aryan migration from the Northwest into India, but they are uncertain how these newcomers either forced or mixed their culture and language onto or with the natives of their day. Maybe we'll find out one day, but as of today, it's a mystery. So that's it, our eighth date, 25th century BCE, the Harappan culture matures, only 45 dates to go. In my next video, we encounter the world's first empire. If you have any questions or know a lot already, in the comment section, please post anything you think is essential to understanding this century or this topic. If you're adding new information, please cite your sources. I'll be monitoring what's going on, and in my conclusion videos to this project, I'll highlight how we've expanded its historiography and list any questions that seem to be left unanswered. At that point, we'll have a stronger foundation for my next project and all future projects. And of course, if you're an expert and you want to share your knowledge to help guide us, please feel free to join the conversation. Or if you're interested, I'd love to interview you and post it right here. So contact me. If you just found me for the first time and are curious what this is all about, go check out my intro videos to both this project and this channel. And as always, subscribe, like, donate some money to keep the show going. Click the notification so you know when the next video is up, and I'll see you then.